What is up YouTube? In this video, we are going to look at how you can dockerize your Airflow using Docker. All right, before we move on to the video, I really want to thank you all who have subscribed to my YouTube channel lately. In this video, I'm going to cover a video version of my previous article posted on Lynx Data Engineering blog. This blog post kind of covers a custom deployment of Airflow using Docker, which can happen anywhere on your local, on cloud, on a, a certain VM. Uh, there are two main components. One is Apache Airflow, other is Docker. Also in this demo, we're going to customize this container. As I mentioned, it is much more customizable. Uh, we will customize this uh, Airflow instance to work with Spark and with Google Cloud Storage. Regarding the tutorial, let's look at the main deployment. So we use Docker to create an image of Airflow. We start from Python as a base layer, then add up all the dependencies from there. Uh, in terms of deployment, uh, there's like a folder structure to it. The, in terms of structure, it has like four main key elements of the package. One is requirements. Uh, requirements cover the things you're gonna install as in like the dependencies. There are two types of dependencies. One is packages.txt, that's like the Rylinx, Linux requirements. So you're basically installing Python and all. There's a Python requirements, which are like pip packages in general. So basically Airflow is part of uh, the uh, pip package you're going to install with Flask. Uh, and then a few more libraries like PsychOp G2, Pandas. The next part is configuration files. Um, as a part of configuration file, there are three main configuration files, airflow.cfg, supervisor D, which, is the, which contains the logs and monitors the processes. And then there's Spark configuration, which we, because we're installing Spark with the Airflow instance. All these configurations are actually part of the whole Git repo. We can go into it. I leave a link of this repo. It's under my YouTube uh, GitHub repo under Airflow Docker. But then all the configs kind of live here under this folder. Airflow.config mainly covers in the detail of the configuration required by uh, Airflow. Uh, these are very comprehensive, sometimes can get quite messy. Feel free to check it out. This is kind of default configuration I've just placed in here. Uh, next is uh, supervisorD.configuration. This is basically telling uh, the process, uh, basically the supervisor D is kind of monitoring and logging whatever is happening within that container uh, regarding to Airflow. So it's basically looking at that and monitoring and keeping all the logs in place. That's the configuration it's required. Spark defaults is another configuration for required for Spark. Uh, it contains the endpoints if you want to connect it to S3 or GCS, etc. So that's where this comes in handy. So yeah, these are the main configuration files. Uh, moving on, then the main is the Docker file, which is actually central to the whole project. Let's look into it. I've, I've, I have a link in uh, the blog itself, but you can say we can, you can see that we kind of start from a base layer image, which is uh, open JDK, which is like a Java runtime image. Uh, usually that's how like Docker images work. It's the uh, layers are kind of stacked one over the other. And that's how Docker is kind of working internally. So it starts from here. And then uh, instead of using like a, general airflow image, we start from a Java image and then we kind of build up from there, passing in the environment variables, installing, downloading Spark, uh, uh, configuring Spark with GCS, Google Cloud uh, Storage. Basically, we, want, we are aiming at deploying it on, on a VM which is under Google Cloud so that it can access, uh, so that Spark can access the Google Storage directly and just use it uh, for transformation and uh, reading files. And as a next step, we are copying all the requirements, installing packages. So you can see all the th all these things are kind of happening here. First, we just copy, uh, basically from the image, we're copying in files from our local repository to this image. That's, that's how the copy commands work. And then we are installing all the packages, like we're running the package.txt as apt get installation. And then we are running the pip install to install the Python requirements. Moving on. Uh, the next step is because we, we the aim is to configure it using Google Cloud within Google Cloud environment. So we install the G, uh, gsutil and gcloud command line uh, from this link so that it's already there for us to use. We use that install.sh script. Yeah, usually doesn't cause a problem in my experience, so it should work pretty smoothly here. Yeah. So then moving on is more like uh, copy configuration files. So these are all the config files we I just went through previously. It is placing the right configuration files in the right place. So the supervisor config is going under the supervisor D 
config.d uh, airflow configuration is going under the airflow home directory so and then it create it's creating creating a directory under logs so that all the logs kind of live here under this folder so yeah it's pretty straightforward there's an entry dot uh, entry point dot sh file which i'm just going to briefly go through after this and after all of this is done it exposes this ports uh, exposes this these these two ports 8080 and 9001 8080 is for airflow because we, we have a custom URL within that default uh, airflow config and then 9001 uh, as a supervised port for open so you can access both of them through here so so yeah and then at, as a last command you just um, initialize supervisor D so that it's capturing everything in place with the lock folder so pretty straightforward and that's what I've mentioned here so yep so basically this is the main central part to the whole thing you can go through it uh, and you can just install it so this is the main floor so yeah moving on uh, the last part which is part 4 running the docker file with docker compose so what's going to happen is you're going to build a, a docker image uh, you're going to pass in the command docker build and pass in the name of the image and the version of the image and dot means like all the files within that folder you're going to run this command under the shell all right so now that we have logged into the docker file in detail uh, let's try to execute it in runtime i'm going to try to build this image on my local so yeah let's just go back to my visual studio code as you can see the docker file kind of lives here the whole project kind of lives here uh, you can access this repo as we've covered the, uh, the three main part the next part is the docker compose uh, you can do without docker compose uh, uh, you can just use docker run command to run this image like docker build command to first build the image and then run it uh, in my case I, I kind of prefer using docker compose because usually airflow is not the only service you want to run I usually kind of run other services like a, a backend API and an nginx, nginx server you can, as you can see in docker compose you, you create a service basically and then you pass in the image name first you have to build the image and then the container name airflow we call it and then you pass in the environment variables the volumes the last part is like ports these are the ports you're kind of mapping into so you can consider like an image as a separate entity this image is kind of encapsulated in a single place and then you use the ports to open and map it to your own local host port and then just debug it locally the first thing i would need to do is to kind of uh, build the image so i have a build docker.sh file so i can just go into the airflow docker folder airflow and just build the docker image so yeah let's just wait for it seems like there's an issue uh seems like there's a small issue that the file has is not being found so i need to look where the file kind of supervisor dot uh where this file kind of exists uh, it exists under the supervisor d folder so yeah i need to change that within my image supervisor d So I need to change it, yeah, because it, uh, because if this lives under this config folder, I made a mistake. I need to change this. I'm gonna commit this change as well. So I'm gonna do a build Docker image again, so that it finds the file. All right, let's just wait for it. As you can see, there are like 13 different layers to it. The first one is it has picked up from open JDK then it's installing other things I laid out so all these 13 steps are being executed and then it's going, going to be packaged as an image so after an image is packaged then I can run it using Docker Compose or Docker Run all right now you can see the build of the image has been done uh, you can see all the 13 layers you can see all the 13 layers and the, all the 13 commands being run uh, and it was successful which is great as in for the next step for me is to run this image using docker compose uh, to run this image i already have a shell com command these these kind of shell scripts kind of are easy to run you just don't have to think about the command later on because it's already written down so i'm going to be moving out of that folder and going to do sh run docker compose run compose.sh file so let's see how it works seems like it's running the image attaching the image yep looks like it's running give it give it some time maybe one more thing i need to point out uh, uh the version of airflow i'm using is i'm using an inline sqlite database for airflow 
Uh, one thing you can do, you can create a separate service like as a My MySQL or PostgreSQL as a separate service because then it allows you for multitasking. Uh, this is kind of a dev version, uh, dev, dev package. In production, you should like have a separate um, service for MySQL so that everything kind of runs in parallel. So yeah, uh, it looks like uh, the ports are running. Yeah, let me let me add in a, another terminal and see if the image is up. Docker ps, nice. So it looks like the image is up, and it's on port 8080. So let me go on to localhost port 8080 because it's being mapped. All right. So it looks like things are things are working. The image kind of works. I have these predefined credentials. So yeah, I just need to figure out the credentials, but in general, you get a sense on uh, how the image kind of is built uh, from scratch and how all the dependencies are kind of laid out. You can pass in the credentials, you can pass in details. Uh, looks good to me in terms of tutorial. Feel free to check out this repo and check out the article on Lynx Data Engineering Publication. I think that's about it in terms of this video. If you got value out of this, definitely hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, it really helps me a lot to push my content to people like you further on. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.